Hi, um, I'm Dahlia Fowler. I uh, was a professor at the Scripps Research Institute for many years, and Kathy Chang was a senior postdoctoral research associate in my lab and became a staff scientist when she was working on this project. And uh, she now has advanced to become a, an assistant professor, tenure track assistant professor at the Indiana University School of Optometry in Bloomington, Indiana. And I have since then also moved. I'm now a department chair of biological sciences at the University of Delaware. So we've used this study to help move our careers along and to start new avenues of investigation in this area. And I'll now turn it over to Kathy to tell everyone how we got started on this project. Uh, so this project really originated from Velia and my interest in aging in the lens. So one of the pathologies that almost everybody will face is originates from the lens. So there are two age-related pathologies that we're really interested in studying, including cataracts, which is any opacity in the lens. And cataracts are the leading cause of blindness in the world, and it is the number one vision-related Medicare cost in the United States. This cataracts can be alleviated by surgery, but the access to surgery is not equal worldwide. So despite all of our efforts, we still don't know uh, what causes cataracts. And in particular, we were interested in understanding how age-related cataracts work. The other lens age-related pathology is presbyopia. Presbyopia is the inability of your lens to change shape so that you can see up close. So everybody needs reading glasses. And this is due to a partially the growth of the lens throughout your lifetime, as well as the increased stiffness in your lens throughout your lifetime. And again, it is unknown what are the cellular and molecular mechanisms for increase in lens stiffness with age. So we embarked on this study really to try to understand what were the driving factors for changes in the normal lens during aging. And we used a mouse model because mice age much quicker than primates. And it serves as a way for us to understand what happens to the lens uh, during normal aging. So previous studies have extrapolated uh, data from younger lenses and made predictions about the older lens. And we found several things that were different in our aging study. So in order to study lens aging in the mouse, we needed to assemble a team of experts from around the world so we could study all the relevant cellular and biological physical features of lens aging with relevance to cataracts and presbyopia. So in my own lab, we uh, recruited another postdoctoral fellow, Justin Perino, to help out with the lens dissections, lens imaging, and the mechanical biomechanical measurements, as well as Roberta Nowak, our research assistant who assisted with managing the mouse colony, which got large as it's as they have to be aged, which is a very long time for up to two years or over two years. Then we needed a team of microscopists to do the electron microscopy to look at the ultrastructure of the lens cells because there's no other way to look at lens cells in the middle of the lens unless you do electron microscopy, which is a process where we can fix the lens well enough to get the fixative to penetrate all in, into the in, throughout the entire lens, which in an older mouse is uh, millimeters thick. So this included Sandeep Biswas and Wu Ken Lo at the Morehouse University School of Medicine. We also needed a team of inv investigators to study the refractive index of the lens as the lens aged. So this again is a very specialized technique and uh, the investigator we recruited, Barbara Pierschenek in the United Kingdom, collaborates with a group in Japan at the Synchrotron I think it's the Riken 8 synchrotron. Is that right, Kathy? Yes. Yeah, the right Riken 8 synchrotron to do soft x-ray diffraction where they can image entire mouse eyes without perturbing them. So non-invasively image the entire mouse eye to look at the refractive index of the different tissues and they can then segment the images to see what the refractive index of the lens is. And that team includes, and this is where Kei Hao Wang, I'm, so Kathy, you're going to have to tell me. I can't remember. Kei Hao is um, Barbara's postdoc. Oh, okay. But and then... the other three Japanese uh, scientists are the ones who did the experiments at the synchrotron. Oh, okay, so Kei Hao Wang is assisting postdoctoral fellow with Barbara Pirschenek, assisting with analyzing the data from this X-ray diffraction 
the soft x-ray diffraction imaging of the eyes, of the mouse eyes. And then the three scientists from Riken 8 are Masato Hoshino, Kentaro Uesugi, and Naote Yagi, and they operate the synchrotron, the soft x-ray diffraction aspect of the synchrotron and were in, totally essential for this project. And finally, we uh, also really late in the project uh, learned that Juliet Moncaster had some similar observations on a different strain of mice, which were able to, we were able to then incorporate into our manuscript to show that the phenomenology that we discovered in the aging mouse lens was not specific to one strain of mice. So that's a very important finding as well. So as you all can see this or hear, this is an, an international team of investigators from the United States, United Kingdom and Japan in order to solve the problem of what happens during mouse lens aging. And now Kathy will describe the what we actually did to study the lens. What did we learn? Uh, so the lens is a really interesting aging model because the lens retains all of the cells that were ever made within the organ. So the cells in the middle of your lens have been there since you were an embryo, and the lens continues to add more layers on the outer cortex with, throughout your lifetime. So we're studying both le cells that are chronologically old, so aged uh, cells, but we're also studying cells that were made later in life. So this makes this tissue a unique aging model that we can study multiple generations of cells all within one tissue sample. So one of the first things that we did was look at uh, the stiffness and the morphometric features of the lens through aging. So we looked at mice that were between two months all the way up to 30 months of age. And in the black six um, mouse strain, 30 months of age is approximately the maximum lifespan of these mice. So we basically covered a lot of territory. So from very young, so from young adult mice all the way up to very old mice. And we were fortunate to receive some of the older mice from Dr. Bill Balch at the Scripps Research Institute. He was very generous in providing us with his aged um, my mouse colony, and we were able to get those um, eyes and lens samples from, from his mouse colony. Our studies found that the stiffness of the mouse lens increases with age, um, and it continues up through 30 months. This is similar to a primate lens, so we have similar findings as primate lenses because we know that there's increased stiffness of human lenses with age as well. We found and uh, sort of surprisingly that the lens stops growing, at least in the mouse, around 18 months of age. So the lens doesn't increase much in size and weight uh, uh, as, as the lens ages, even though there's an increase in stiffness. So we think that uh, the stiffness of the lens cannot be directly described or attributed to uh, the increase um, in lens size. So this is something that had all, had been a, a long-standing hypothesis that the growth of the lens is what is causing the increase in stiffness, but at least in mouse, we don't see that as a direct correlation. So we continued the study by having uh, Justin Perino look at the different uh, morphometric properties of the cells of the inside the lens. So the lens is also encapsulated by a membrane called the lens capsule. And we measured the lens capsule thickness. We looked at the size of the epithelial cells and the fiber cells, and we found no significant changes past around four to eight months of age. So these parameters did increase slightly between young mice at two months, but up to about four to six, four to eight months, we don't see any more increase um, in the thickness of the capsule or the size of the cells. So we think that the increase in lens stiffness also doesn't have much to do with sort of changes in the cell, cell shape or size or um, the thickness of the lens capsule that surrounds it. So we still don't have a great 
explanation for the increase in lens stiffness, but there is one parameter that does increase with lens stiffness and with lens age continuously, and that is the increase in the size of the lens nucleus. So the lens nucleus is the center of the lens, and this sort of hard um, central part of the lens is does increase in size with age. So it's possible that the increase in lens stiffness may be par partially related to this increase in the size of the center of the lens. Our collaborators at Morehouse, Dr. Lowe and Dr. Uh, Biswas, did the electron microscopy. One of the reasons why we did that, that part of the study was because we noticed that a lot of the lenses over the age of 12 months had a cortical cataract. So this is in the cortex of the lens, the periphery of the lens, and we could see a very distinct ring um, in that region. So in order to investigate that, Dr. Lowe and Dr. Biswas did electron microscopy and we were able to find that there is a zone of compression of the cells. So there's a collapse in those cells and this causes an optical discontinuity leading to the cortical ring cataract. Another age-related cataract that we often saw in the mice were anterior cataracts, so right at the anterior pole of the lens. So uh, I did the staining and uh, whole lens staining and imaging to look at uh, that defect. And we found that there is an incomplete uh, elongation of the cells within the, that make up the lens. And this leads to the anterior cataracts. So sort of a surprising discovery was that the age-related cataracts in mouse lenses is due to structural changes inside the lens. So this is a little different from when we think about um, humans who have nuclear cataracts in the center of their lens, and a lot of times that's attributed to a protein degradation or protein aggregation. So it's possible that because the mice are raised in a indoor environment, it's a little bit different than the aging that occurs with humans and other larger um, primates who are exposed to sunshine and other types, UV and other sources that may lead to oxidative stress and protein aggregation. So that was sort of a unexpected finding for us. And then Dr. Pirchenek and her collaborators in Japan and her postdoc in the UK provided us with beautiful uh, refractive index data. And our findings show that the mouse lens has a two-tiered refractive index gradient. So this is a little different also from uh, other lenses that she studied. She's looked at primate lenses, uh, cow, uh, rabbit, uh, zebrafish lenses even. So the mouse lens has this two-tiered refractive index gradient that kind of looks like a two-tiered cake. And we discovered that the refractive index in the mouse lens peaks at about six months of age. But the area of highest refractive index does increase with age. So it expands and it correlates almost exactly with the size of the lens nucleus, which is the hard center of the mouse lens. So we were able to study, she helped us image, the, or her team in, the, in Japan imaged mice between two months and 30 months of age and got us all this really incredible data. And this helps us to understand how the refractive index changes with age. And we expect sort of similar changes in uh, primate lenses. So that's something that um, I'm sure she and others are interested in working on. Okay, so uh, first of all, when I moved to the University of Delaware, J Kathy Chang had already gone to Indiana University, but Justin Pereno moved with me to help set up my lab and continue our collaborative studies on lens biomechanics and aging. And so the direction that my lab is really interested in is to look at the cellular changes within lenses as they're changing shape uh, under conditions that mimic accommodation, a uh, mimic to change in, sh in the shape of the lens that leads to either focusing near or far. So we're using the mouse models to de develop our imaging methodologies and to be able to understand what might be the genetic basis of the lens's ability to change shape and how that changes with age. So there's the aging connection there. And then in, we're also starting to work on the non-human primate lenses to understand whether the, the cells in the primate lens change their shapes and are important to change their shapes in order to allow the lens to accommodate. Since non-human primates, such as these, um, will 
will change their lens will accommodate a change of shape to focus near and far whereas the mouse lens remains round the mice pretty much look at very close objects they rely more on their whiskers and their uh, sense of smell and their hearing than they do on their eyes to detect things in their environment so my lab is more moving in the direction of sort of bioengineering biomechanics of lenses comparing the mouse and the human but with this emphasis on the cellular structure of the lens and how that contributes to the stiffness and the flexibility of the lens uh, as it ages. I guess I wait, I should change that. With an emphasis on how the cellular structures contribute to the flexibility of the lens in young lenses and change to lead to lens stiffness during aging. So Kathy's, I believe, taking a slightly different direction here. So I set up my lab um, at Indiana University just a little over a year ago. My interest actually now has shifted to focus on F efferent signaling within the lens. And I'm still working on the aging aspect because in humans, mutations in FA2, EPHA2, and efferin A5, um, one is a receptor and the second is a ligand, uh, lead to age-related cataracts as well as dominant and recessive congenital cataracts. So I'm really interested in understanding what happens in humans who have mutations, especially in FA2, uh, that leads to these age-related cataracts. So um, my recent work uh, has shown that in six-week-old uh, FA2 knockout um, mouse, the mouse model, we can find that they have age-related or early onset, I would say early onset, um, cortical cataracts, so cortical opacities. So I'm really interested in studying that because this mirrors the human um, cataracts, which are also cortical um, or in the periphery of the lens. So I'm embarking now on an aging study of the knockout um, mouse lines that have uh, FA2 or efferin A5 knocked out and really understanding what happens to those lenses with age. And one of the interesting findings recently is that the these two knockout um, lenses don't have a decrease in the overall lens stiffness, we do find that they are more resilient. So they are more elastic and they bounce back after the compression better than the wild type lenses, their, their litter mate controls. So this is an unusual finding and I'm working on sort of an imaging study to try to determine what is the cause of that change. So really trying to understand what imparts the elasticity and the sort of uh, the biomechanical properties uh, lenses. So those are sort of the sort of short-term directions, but long-term I would like to um, age the FA2 and the FRN A5 knockout mice similar to what we've done with the wild type and really uh, look at what happens uh, to the lens in these knockouts with age. Yeah, you know, if I could add, I think uh, Kathy's research direction really illustrates where the field wants to go, which is to identify the molecular uh, correlates or causes of the cellular stru and the structural changes in the lens that uh, accompany aging. And then if you understand that, you might be able to intervene. But right now, we're still at very early days, probably more than efferins involved, efferin and FA2 receptors involved. There's going to be a lot of molecules, but I think her work is really uh, just going to be the tip of the iceberg. And I think we can all look forward to learning more about the molecular basis of aging now that we, Kathy and myself and our team, have established a kind of a roadmap of what to look for, which wasn't uh, available beforehand. In conclusion, in summary, what I'd like to summarize about our contribution is that this is the very first comprehensive analysis of aging in the mouse lens, starting from very young mouse, you know, one to two months old, all the way up to over 30 months old, which is a, a very ancient mouse. The mice are not happy when they're that old. And we really looked at um, all the cellular and structural events that happen during aging, including the cell shapes, they were the sizes, the locations, the capsule thickness, the refractive index, so the functional properties of the lens, that, in other words, the optical properties, the refractive index, and mapped it onto the structural features of the lens, as well as the biomechanics. 
And through this process, we discovered some unexpected findings, which Kathy already summarized for you earlier. And I think this is then what allows us to have a roadmap for the future to under to link molecular changes to the cellular and structural changes during lens aging. And I hope to see many more follow-up studies from many groups in the future on this topic.